All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So I figured I'd do a real quick video on the mods I've done to my jet sled. I've had this thing for probably around eight years or so and I've beaten the living crap out of the thing. I got a few mods that I've done to this thing. They're not really over the top, they're pretty cheap and easy to do, but I figured some of you guys might be getting jet sleds or you know the Pelican sleds, Otter sleds, whatever they are, they're all the same basically. These mods can be used on any of those sleds. I figured maybe some of you guys might be getting a sled for Christmas or you might be buying one for this season. So these are my top six mods that I would do right out the gate when I first bought a ice fishing sled like this. So the first thing that I did when I got this thing home was order a runner kit for it. Um, I'll link it down in the description below. It's for jet sleds, but Otter makes their own. And, you know, the, the other companies make their own type of runner kit. And it's just a high fax material. It's made for the sled, the size sled that you have. This is a jet sled XL in the camo. I'll show you what these look like. You can see these green runners on here. They're just that high fax. Um, high density plastic that you put on there and you just drill some holes put the supplied bolts right through all the wear and tear goes to these guys now it's this is going to help your sled from wearing out over time if you're dragging it across pavement you know down sections of road even gravel even just dragging it ac across the ice and on snowmobile trails it will get beat up if you don't have these on there and trust me i know because i've worn out uh, a couple of sleds of my own that didn't have these the other thing that these do is uh, you know kind of reduce the friction when you're when you're hauling it across gravel even like if you're pulling it by hand um, it's gonna pull a little bit easier across something like your garage or across your driveway um, parking lots things like things like that so I really recommend putting these on there it's just gonna extend the life of your sled now if you don't want to go and spend the money on these runners here you can put on a set of cross-country skis you can generally find those pretty cheap or even for free and those work pretty well. I used those on a sled I used to have a couple years ago. I think that this, this runner kit is gonna be a lighter uh, option just to put on there. So, link down in the description below, check them out. All right, so the second mod that I did for this thing was ditch the crappy rope that it came with and put on a thicker, longer rope. So, this is gonna save your hands just having a larger diameter to grab onto. And by making it longer, it's not gonna, when you go downhill, it's not gonna be nipping at your heels. You gotta try to get out of the way. You have enough room to pull this thing without it bumping into you. And I think the longer rope that you get, the less of an angle you're gonna have when you're pulling it. And this makes it easier to pull. The other thing I've done before is when I take these, I'll, I'll put on a piece of uh, rubber tubing. And that just helps, you know, with your hands if you're going barehanded and, and pulling this thing along. But the best way to pull these is to wrap this rope around your waist and then just walk. Like I said, a little bit longer rope helps with that. I just estimated, but I think I have like 15 to 20 feet of rope on this thing, which is maybe a little bit much, but um, I've been using it like that for a couple years and no complaints at all. The other thing with the longer rope is you want the rope to be longer than the sled. Because when you're going downhill, what I like to do is take my rope, run it down the back of the sled like this, you can let the sled go downhill and you can actually kind of steer it by pulling on the rope so that way you're kind of easing it down the hill and the thing's not taking off on you going banging down through the woods bouncing off trees and ruining all your gear so a new rope that's number two mod number three is adding these bungee cords on this thing has been an absolute lifesaver for me especially when you're hauling stuff behind a snowmobile even just by hand but this just keeps everything in place from shifting around and it's a really cheap and really effective mod. I put three bungee cords, as you can see, uh, that span the whole sled. So you just go and buy a set of bungee cords. I'll link one down in the description below that work well. You really want the ones that have the nice metal clips on the end because the plastic ones will just end up breaking. So you drill a hole in one side, cut your bungee cord, tie a knot in it, run it up through, and then you can reach across and lock that bungee cord like that across your gear if you're hauling shacks, augers, anything. If you have just a basic five gallon bucket, uh, they fit just like this. And sometimes they can tip over if you're going up and down hill and over roots and stumps and stuff. So what I like to do is I put one bungee cord in the back. I'll run it over the top of the bucket through the handle, right to the side like that. And that secures my bucket from going anywhere. Mod number four that I did to this, I did this one last year and I really like it. I have some expensive jig rods and 
just like anyone I don't want to break them so instead of bringing the whole hard case out on the ice with me if I'm just walking in it's a nice easy flat walk across the ice um, I'll use these so I installed some rod holders here on the back of the sled these are called all right rod holders I'll link them down in the description below I had them on the back of my snowmobile last year and I really liked how they securely hold the rod in there it kind of snaps down in there if I'm going to be trailering this across the lake for a long distance I'll keep the rods in a in a hard case just so they don't bounce around but um, if I'm just gonna be on foot hole hopping and stuff I'll keep my rods out that I'm gonna be using stuff from right in here and they stick up in there out of the way leaves this the rest of the sled all open for me and it keeps my rods from getting busted in their easy access right there uh, the other thing you can do if you didn't want to buy these is just take some PVC pipe same exact thing lay it across there bolt it right through notch it out if you want to make a spot for the handle to go in but that's a, that was a good mod for last year and I've been using it a ton already this year yeah. okay mod number five it's just a spot on the back to be able to daisy chain multiple sleds together. I built this myself. I think they make kits that you can buy, but I just used an eye bolt with an aluminum plate on the back. And we just I just drilled one hole and bolted it right through. That's enough to hold uh, you know, another jet sled or two behind this. And the reason I did that is because sometimes we have snowmobile failures. Like last year, um, I had to ride out on Josh's snowmobile with him because mine wouldn't start back at the cabin. So we had to daisy chain sleds together. And if you have this on here, it makes it really easy to either run the rope through it or run your trailer hitch through that hook, put the pin right down through, and you're all set. Mod number six here, this is the last one, is adding some type of measurement device on the side of this sled. Now I got a uh, Quick Measure Pro thing. It's made, I think, for to go on a fishing rod, but uh, you can use whatever you want. You can mount an actual yardstick on there or whatever you want to do but I just put a small uh, decal on here and I stuck it as close as I could to this lip to keep it from rubbing and uh, you know peeling off so you might have to switch them out every now and then if they get beat up but um, it's handy to have if you're right next to the hole you can measure your fish see if you're legal if you're going to keep it or not or just to know how big your fish is so I'll link uh, a couple of these down in the description below that I've used before that work pretty well. One more thing I would recommend getting for this sled if, you, if you're going to trailer it behind a snowmobile especially is a cover. There's nothing worse than going across the lake, getting to the spot, and everything you have is just full of snow or slush. And just bit, getting a cheap cover for this thing is a really handy thing to have. So I'll link that down in the description below. I use it all the time whenever I'm trailing across the lake. If you guys have any other ideas that I should do to this thing, leave them down in the description below. I always like to hear what you guys do. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, guys, I'm sorry about that. I had to clickbait you guys for the thumbnail there. I thought it was a pretty funny thing just to toss a motor on here. Anyways, guys, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification. A couple of people have let me know that they haven't been notified in some of my recent posts. So go and check that bell notification. It really helps me out. Subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We'll catch you guys in the next video.